Hey, good evening. It's Sabine. It is the 21st of March on Tuesday. This is the new article I just wrote, um, and I have updated it today with a portion on the Swedish Boys Vision on the Comet E3 and the uh, potential understanding or fulfillment of the ninth hour marker of the Lord's coming. So as always, you can find the article in the description box below. And what I did uh, earlier today is that I recorded a read through of the entire article in audio format, because otherwise on YouTube, it would be like five videos of uh, 15 minutes. Um, but this is a uh, ongoing read through. It's going to be available until um, Sunday because it's taking up a lot of um, space on my hard drive. I wasn't able to um, upload it elsewhere. So until Sunday, you can find the audio file also in the description box or just enter into the article and click on the link over here. So before you, you see the hidden treasure inside the uh, sword of Orion, the great Orion nebula with what I believe to be the heart of the Lord, the display, the lost jewels of Orion and the running man. And they all have scriptural meaning. So because I've already recorded the complete read through of the article, this is just going to be a highlight of the key elements of the entire article. So you can choose to either read it or listen to the audio or just glance through the article and pick up the elements which are of your interest. So the calendar is listed over here and after the markings of the spring equinoxes in Giza and Jerusalem, which is one of the openings of the summer door confirmed in the spring equinox, which is a worldwide um, single uh, event. Uh, we see the opening of the summer doors referred to in Matthew 24. And from Adar 23 to Nisan, we see closing of spiritual preparation, tabernacle inauguration, priestly ordination, uh, both on the lunar calendars, but also on the Essene calendar. There's a marker of the Essene calendar over here. Um, and... Uh, Nissan 1 is especially rich prophetically. Uh, here are a couple of Nissan 1 markers, but there are more uh, markers for Nissan 1 in the text. And of course, the expected sighting of the first sliver is March 22, but because it is only 0.7%, the chances of it being sighted are actually slim. So you can click on this link to the website renewedmoon.com um, to see whether or not it's going to be cited on the 22nd. If not, the month of Nissan will uh, start one day later by default. And that will have implications for all the scriptural markers. So all the celestial events will stay the same, but all the markers from scripture will move forward one day if that happens. Because that's the only thing that Torah calendar doesn't uh, take into account a potential delayed sighting of the new moon. So the celestial markers are in black, the scriptural markers in red, the references to Nisan 1, the end of the uh, priestly ordination in the time of Moses, Aaron and his sons, uh, the sanctification of the people in Ezra, the potential fulfillment of 1 Samuel 20 of David, the type of the beloved not being present at the onset of the new moon banquet and an enemy attack on the second day, and um, the celestial markers for the coming week are found over here. Then the sign and the sign of and the coming of the Son of Man. So what is what was once hidden is now revealed. The Lord is step by step in the process of revealing what the sign of the coming of the Son of Man will be, where it will manifest in the heavens. I believe it will be in the constellation Orion. And he is giving us 
uh, building blocks or stepping stones to understand what is happening when and how, uh, but also why. John 3 aligning with the month of March, summer being nigh even at the doors, the equilux and equinox uh, referred to in the book of Enoch as the day of equal parts, the spring equilux, and one day later in Jerusalem, in John 11:9, the Lord spoke of the day of equal and night and daytime. Um, that was connected to the death and the raising of Lazarus. So here it is explained what I understand that to mean scripturally to us. And as the groom's righteous servant, Mercury, the forerunner and groomsman, has drawn closer to the sun and is still very close to the sun, it has gone into stealth mode. And what we actually see is that the flip side of the coin, the evil servant, is now coming forth. So here I describe how the uh, conjunction of Mercury and the sun is uh, written out in the scriptures in the uh, baptism scene of John the Baptist, the forerunner and groomsman, and the Son, the Lord, coming together, and how that narrative is now flipped to the evil steward, pointing to the uh, wicked Haman. So the climax of the book of Esther is now playing out in the constellation Pisces and Aries, and at the time of the actual events of the book of Esther, we can track that back. Um, you can find the links in the text. The sun was also in Pisces. So due to the backward movement of the sun on the ecliptic over time, um, the equinoxes have, ch have shifted uh, since the book of Esther. But at the time, the book played out in the constellation Pisces. And that was the constellation selected by Haman for specific reasons. So that is what was implied with the casting of lots. That was astrological divination and witchcraft. What he tried to do, Esther and Mordecai interceded, but they also overcame by the understanding of the timekeeping of the Babylonian system, what Haman was trying to construe. Um, the intercalation, the adding of a, an extra month of a dar was introduced. So that was part of the overcoming. But what I'm describing here is the climax of the book playing out in the heavens as we speak. So here you can find the players. Um, today the moon and the sun are uh, together. They're in their echad phase or the uh, marital union of the solar bridegroom and the lunar bride and the expectation of the moon new moon being birthed or drawn out uh, could be tomorrow or one day later starting the month of Nisan. Nisan 1, a potential month of the onset of judgment, it is also connected to coronation uh, potential fulfillment of 1 Samuel 20 and of course the Swedish boys, uh, boys' vision. This is the uh, short rendition of what the equinox in the heaven looks like in addition to the players of the climax of the book of Esther. And then the heart's throne, the throne of the Lord's heart in the heavens, in the constellation Orion, in the sword of Orion, the great nebula, seen as the Lord's beating heart with an emerald throne. There is information in the article in the end notes that the Giza pyramid was actually beating at the same heartbeat as the beating of the Lord, uh, of the heartbeat in the heavens. The Khufu pyramid was uh, the altar and witness in stone of a book of Isaiah 35 designed by Enoch. It was the representation of the Bride of Christ on earth and it functioned as a hydroelectric water vitalizer and the pump system actually had the frequency of a heartbeat and they have uh, reconstructed that system. You can actually look at it and listen to the heartbeat. It is truly, truly amazing. So we have the 
jewels of Orion, the lost jewels of Orion, and the running man constellation. And it is explained where to find that. The runners of Paul, the Apostle Paul's, and the lost jewels of the faithful witnesses to the crucifixion are found in that heart nebula of Orion. Marked out, of course, by Comet E3, the Aquila Comet, in a horizontal alignment with the great Orion Nebula as we speak. And then onwards to the star Rigel in the left foot of Orion. The Lord coming in triumph to crush the enemy. So, and here is a, an amazing, um, amazing footage of entering into the heart of Orion. I'm not going to show it here. Um, I hope you will enjoy it by looking into the article itself. The uh, references to scripture of where to find Orion's Nebula, the Swedish boy's vision, potentially fulfilled this Friday. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen that vision yet, I would recommend for you to look into it. If you have, then you can pick up all the celestial markers for the coming weekend because the vision spanned a time frame of a Friday to a Sunday, potentially this weekend. And um, it will start with the raising of the Northern Cross. These stars in the center of Cygnus of Swan, the constellation, the Northern Cross, are in the exact alignment as the Giza Plateau, just like Orion's Belt stars. So you're going to see the amazing and timely references uh, coding the Harpazo. Perhaps that could be true next week too, but this is just for this weekend. And the alignments um, are really interesting. So the moment that the head or the capstone is at Meridian is where the goat is popping its head uh, forward, so to speak. So we're very familiar with this scene as well. Um, yes, the Swedish voice vision itself is also included. The lifting up of the Lord, the coming branch, the Lord coming forward as light in triumph, his enemies being crushed under his feet. That is the next marker that the Comedy 3 is going to mark out. Um, I believe this could also be the uh, fulfillment of the understanding of what the Lord shared through our sister Mendy Ralph, uh, that he would be coming at the ninth hour. So this is an understanding of what that hour could mean seen on the Orion 24 hour clock. Um, that is a finding from uh, the stewards of uh, White Cloud Farm, um, I have referenced them in the article as well. So the comet will align from April 3rd until April 10th with the star Rigel, meaning the crushing underfoot. And the star notes the ninth, ninth hour marker on the 24 hour clock. So the Timekeeping in Giza put on a 24 hour clock, and it, it is explained why to do that. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, this would be the ninth hour between eight and nine. That is going to be marked out by the comet between April 3rd and April 10th, and on exactly April 4th, the horizontal alignment of the comet with the Rigel star. Uh, will be, um, I believe, the understanding of the ninth hour. So you can read about that and determine whether you think that is accurate or plausible uh, yourself. And of course, we can find the references to the constellation Orion in the book of Job uh, 38. And then the article concludes with the Passover Exodus 2.0 plagues the onset of tribulation, the destroyer planet coming, the heart of the Father in the Giza pyramid, the same heartbeat and pulsation 
the rabbinical deception with the calendar juggling of Purim then and now. Esther and Mordecai typing the two 